dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our, our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and life. Raise your response. Almighty and ever living God, <coughs> sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow yeah. Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On his journey out to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethany from Bethany, the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go to the village opposite you. When you enter it, you will find a cold tether in which no one has ever sat. A tie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, Why are you untying it? you will answer. The master has a meal. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the coat, its owner said to them, Why are you untying this coat? They answered, The master has a meal. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the coat, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. Now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. Gospel Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously cry that we may hear his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. <clears throat> because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, for the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Said the blessing, broken, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. 
And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to them, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I send you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. They replied, He said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell, should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then he said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. And going out he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. The disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing a lot of stones thrown from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen them, strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray, that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards, and elders who had come for him. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. He lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with me. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him, for he is also a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were, were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Christ, son, who is that you? And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day when they came, the council of elders of the people met, both the chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are my Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? 
We have heard it from the Son of Man. The whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. He brought charges against them, saying, We found this man in the city of our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that it is a price of king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowd. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all of Judea, from Galilee where he began even to On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilee. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Then Pilate summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me, and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged, and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this man, release the to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city, and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, and wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, he crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. He divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, this is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself 
and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation, and indeed we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was noon, oh, well, it was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down in the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. what had happened glorified God and said this man was innocent beyond doubt when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened they returned home beating their breasts but all his acquaintances stood at a distance including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth, laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was a day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the command. The Gospel of the Lord. I have just a couple of uh, succinct thoughts in the life of Jesus using reflections from the word among us pamphlet. You know, Jesus knew he was entering into a sacred time when he, <coughs> when he paraded into Jerusalem. This was the beginning of his human end. Everything he had said and done for the past three years was leading to Jerusalem and the cross. But he also knew that many in Jerusalem would fail to recognize his arrival as their sacred time that would result in their salvation. Today we begin Holy Week. It's the beginning of our own sacred time as well, but of course we are not in Jerusalem. In the next seven days, Jesus will appear before us as the suffering servant, just as Isaiah had foretold. If you take but a, a little time each day, in, in each of the coming days, you will hear another story that reveals the depth of this love for us. We will see another facet of what it means that Jesus is the sacrificial lamb of God who has come to take away our sins. For example, this coming Monday, 
We will hear how Mary anointed Jesus' feet with costly oil. On Tuesday, we will hear from Isaiah about how our Savior is, is the suffering servant. On Wednesday, we will hear from the Gospel of Matthew how Judas negotiated a delivery price for Jesus. Yes, you heard me correctly. Human greed once again shows its ugly face. 30 pieces of silver. Hmm. Wasn't 30 the approximate age of Jesus when he started his mission here on earth? And then, and then we are into the tritium, the three most sacred days leading to our redemption. This coming week, there is a lot of food for thought for us. Now the question is, how will you hear these stories? Perhaps as snippets of ancient history or echoes of past religious education classes? Or as life-giving testimonies that apply to us today? You know, all the readings for this coming week are, are, can be found in, in our bulletin. So if you pick up a paper copy or go online, all the readings for the week are there. So you have a golden opportunity to ponder the deepest truths of our faith. And not just to ponder them, but to let the Spirit bring them to life for you. You have the opportunity to remember that God raised Jesus from the dead and to know that you are destined for eternal life with him. The hour has come. Jesus is about to offer himself for you. Let's don't miss out on the grace of this sacred time. Let's take a few extra minutes for prayer each day. Spend a little more time reflecting on the Word of God. Look at the cross a little longer. Let the love that Jesus has for you fill your heart and heal your soul. I pray, Holy Spirit, let the grace of this holy week change my heart. May the good Lord enter into our heart this week. I believe in God, the Father of the Father of Heaven, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. You long to gather to yourself the people of Jerusalem. Teach all people to recognize the hour of your visitation, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeemed by your blood. Do not forsake those who have forsaken you. Turn our hearts to you, especially those provoking the war in the Ukraine, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeem by your blood. Through your passion, you gave grace to the world. Help us to live always by your Spirit given to us in baptism, we pray. Sanctify your people, redeem by your blood. You reign in the glory of the Father. Remember those who have died. Today, we pray especially for Marcelino Dulan, Innocencio Dulan, 
Pedrito Gulan and Alberto Escabande to pray to the Lord. Sanctify your people. Almighty God, you have given the human race, Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a model of humility. Help us to bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share his resurrection. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds. Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Savior. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we attain. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant them by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of the one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. <clears throat> be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, Michael, Gary, our bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and form a divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Son, and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, before we go, I'd like to thank um, all the liturgical ministers, from ushers to lecturers to the altar servers, especially that they were not scheduled, but they graciously were on call by their parents, their father, <laughs> but they, they, I think they graciously accepted. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> also, would like to thank you, Deacon Harvey, for having led us in the preaching and the, <coughs> the narrator. Indeed, uh, the Triduum is the three uh, high holy days of Christianity, and it's uh, liturgically celebrated as one. It begins with the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on Thursday. And then we don't um, do that anymore until uh, 
the sign of the cross. We sign, we sign ourselves with the sign of the cross and the blessing of the Easter vigil you know, on Saturday night. So it's a one continuous day of uh, the passion and death and resurrection, of course, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm happy to also announce that the, our new crucifix is uh, being shipped. Uh, this week it was shipped from Italy. And um, I'm thinking of uh, posting pictures of our crucifix so you get an idea what it's uh, going to look like. Unless you overwhelmingly say, no, we'd like to be surprised because you didn't ask for our opinion what kind of a crucifix we would get because it's too late already. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see what happens, how the Holy Spirit um, goes. But, and the altar, as you know, is going to be also um, made locally, mainly by the Marbach uh, family, but also Simon Sosa is going to uh, uh, put his hands into it also in terms of painting it. And I hope you like it. It's going to have the front of piece of the Good Shepherd leading the sheep to, to the Father through the cross. And, um, and so it's very special that we have, we will have an altar made by uh, families from the place. So that's a uh, thank you for. And Archbishop Light, uh, the, the, the piece I showed him, you know, still not, the draft is not finished. He loved it and he's looking forward to. Uh, that other highlight of our 50th anniversary as a parish. Uh, we haven't set the date yet, but he's going to bless the, the cross, the crucifix, and he's also going to consecrate a new altar. And he asked me to make a big deal out of that mass, the consecration of our altar, because it's a beautiful ceremony, it's a mass, but it has a lot of rituals that we are not used to seeing with the crucifix oil. Yeah, to the point that he said, eliminate one mass so that more people come to that mass that we are going to use. So, uh, you may not like that. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how, how we handle that. So, let's see. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow your head. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, that this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to reflect the passion of the Lord. Gentle reminder about picking up the envelopes of uh, an envelope from the Archbishop's appeal. If you have any, just for the intention, uh, monetary donations obviously are welcome. But uh, do, do so; it will be deeply appreciated. We will depart in silence. Mm -hmm.